Game over. SpaceX Sleeping Monster The Super Heavy Elon Musk is developing a vehicle that could revolutionize space travel. The system, called a spacecraft, can carry up to 100 people to Mars and beyond, making it a fully reusable transportation system. SpaceX's long-standing goal has always been to open the door for humanity, to make their life multiplanetary. Motivated by the existential threats facing our dominion on Earth, with horrors such as an asteroid impact wiping out humanity. At a conference in Mexico about five years ago, Elon Musk said history splits in two directions. One way is that we stay on Earth forever and eventually become extinct. He has repeatedly spoken of his big dream of developing a habitable city on Mars. To make this possible, he needed a spaceship that could undertake a mission to send people to the Red Planet, and it came in the form of a spaceship, a rocket that happened to be able to carry over 100 people at once. That a starship will be powerful enough to launch itself off both the lunar and Martian bodies, but it needs super heavy to get off the much more massive Earth. The two-part system comprises the top part, which is a Starship rocket standing ever tall at 120 meters or 394 feet on a reusable booster called the Super Heavy. Now that you know their names, we can trickle down to the technicalities of the system and explore the brilliant engineering behind it. Powered by Raptor engines that burn methane as fuel, a fancy nose cone and landing fins, and a capacity to carry at least 100,000 kilograms of payload to low Earth orbit. The system resembles one from a science comic, and seeks excellence by all means. The six engines allow combustion to take place in stages, and their design cuts down the wastage of the propellant which is stored in the propellant tanks, placed in the middle of the vehicle. Known for unpopular decisions, Musk chose methyl as fuel for the rocket engine which is basically a combination of methane and oxygen. As it can generate a lot of thrust, another explanation behind the decision is that a Mars-oriented game plan required a more suitable solution which Musk came up with in the form of a rationale. The methane could be synthesized from Martian subsurface water and atmospheric carbon dioxide using the saboteur reaction. This in turn makes the entire ambition less costly as using Martian resources could help reach a modest level of self-sufficiency. The upper part can house cargo and people, but the bottom one the booster is where things get interesting. Like the former, a 70 meter tall booster too will be filled with 3,400 tons of chilled methyl and would be powered by Raptor engines. Though the number of engines keeps updating, it is safe to suggest that the engineers will provide more than 18 million pounds or mega newtons of thrust which would enable the system to carry greater payloads to LEO. This will make it super heavy and more powerful than the immense Saturn V launcher used for the Apollo moon missions in the 1960s and 70s. When the upper stage detaches in space, the super heavy boosters flip over and head towards the Earth. During the descent, the Super Heavy deploys steel grid fins from its sides, which help steer the rocket stage back to the launch pad. Initially, Musk and SpaceX wanted to ignite the booster's engines to guide it to a landing on 60 legs, like they did with Falcon 9, but it didn't take them long before they had a change of heart. Announcing it from his Twitter account, Elon announced that he now intends to catch the booster in the air by using an arm on the launch tower. Now, this may sound like an absurd idea to the layman, but the rocket lab going ahead with similar ambitions with their Electron rocket. SpaceX might end up nailing the final nail in the coffin of the naysayers. The interesting setup also allows for orbital refilling to be made possible, as the upper stage could be inserted into a parking orbit after separation where it can be refilled with propellant. Addressing a keynote speech in 2017, Musk boasted that even if he gets the Starship to orbit without any refueling, it will get around 150 tons to low Earth orbit, which is pretty amazing for such a setup. Without any overall refueling, we expect to have a payload capacity of 150 tons to Earth orbit. To refuel, the spacecraft would simply go ahead and dock with another starship that would function as a propellant depot and would be there circling Mother Earth already. Musk emphasized that you can utilize control thrusters to accelerate in the direction that you want to empty. To transfer propellant, which would then be a piece of cake for the mating starship for lengthy and arduous trips, which can take up to 9 months to and from Mars. Musk is looking to install around 40 cabins in the payload area near the front of the upper stage, where each cabin would be able to house around 5 or 6 people. That can make the starship carry people to destinations in the cosmos, including fancy planets like Jupiter, which is a long-term project. Starship might also play a role in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to establish a long-term human presence on the moon. NASA cannot help but be intrigued by the ambition like all of us, and has awarded a $135 million US dollar contract to SpaceX to upgrade its functionality, to that of a crewed lunar lander last year, which is a big achievement for Musk and his team. 
However, it comes with a design change that lacks the flaps which are necessary for a journey back to Earth. Instead, the Starship human landing system would remain in space after its initial launch from Earth to be used for multiple trips between lunar orbit and the moon's surface. Such a system could even be used for high-speed journeys between different destinations on Earth, which will ensure that SpaceX would have to reach a high level of precision and give a tough time to aviation companies. When it comes to the travel times and offer, no move comes without a downside. Musk's company allowed the spacecraft to enter the atmosphere at a 60-degree angle, which is too reliant on its fuel skepticism. But he tackled it, not drag, to create lift. As the spacecraft approaches landing, you should be able to place the spacecraft in a vertical position. Deploying the Raptor by performing an engine ignition shows Musk has done his homework, not intimidated by the complexity of the task or the number of spacecraft landing failures. And of these vehicles, we are fully focused on launching, if all goes according to Musk's plan soon. The billionaire entrepreneur recently said SpaceX plans to launch a spacecraft into orbit later this year, envisioning the duo of super-heavy spacecraft to be fully operational by 2023. Whether or not we can achieve our dreams by then, Elon Musk reiterated the fact that human greatness and creativity never end when we give our best and set our mind to what we want to.